When I began my time at the APS, I was asked to curate an exhibition on Benjamin Franklin and science. Early on in my research, I was inspired by this letter in the Franklin papers. It is a letter written to Benjamin Franklin from his youngest sister, Jane Franklin Meekham. In this letter, she wonders how many Isaac Newtons and Robert Boyles had been lost to the world merely for want of being placed in favorable situations and enjoying proper advantages. What she is talking about is structural inequality and unequal access to resources and education. What different lives she and her brother had. This letter, which she wrote in 1786 towards the end of both of their lives, shaped the narrative of the resulting exhibition. Dr. Franklin, citizen scientist, uses the life and works of Benjamin Franklin to explore the production, circulation, application, and accessibility of science, or what Franklin would call useful knowledge in the 18th century. It considers how Franklin and Western scientific practices benefited from and produced inequality. The exhibition discusses the disadvantages Franklin overcame, but more importantly, the privileges he enjoyed that contributed to his success. Throughout, the exhibition pays attention to the diverse and often overlooked knowledge producers who inspired and enabled Franklin's success. People like Jane Franklin Meekham and the enslaved people in his household. The exhibition was supposed to open last April. If all had gone as planned, the exhibition would actually be closing soon. Unfortunately, right as we were beginning the exhibition installation, the pandemic hit and we were unable to open the exhibition to the public as planned. However, we proceeded with installation and thanks to the NEH CARES grant, I was told that the APS would produce both a virtual tour of the exhibition and an exhibition catalog. And eventually, the exhibition will open for you to visit in person in 2021. The virtual tour is now online and available for you to explore. We decided that we should offer both an adult tour and a youth tour. I worked closely with my co-curator, Emily Margolis, to develop the content for the adult tour. Our museum education colleagues, Mike Medea and Alexandra Raspand, developed the content for the youth tour. There was a lot of back and forth amongst the exhibition team as we all provided feedback on the content of the tours and the development of the tour itself, previewing early versions and giving feedback to the developers on details, including things like what color and shape the icons should be. So I wanna take a second to acknowledge the hard work of everyone else on the exhibition team since they all contributed to this project. We approached the adult tour as if we were preparing a curator-led tour of the physical exhibition. Normally, if you were joining us on a tour in the gallery, Emily and I would take turns talking about major themes of the exhibition and pointing out some object highlights. So that's basically what we did for the virtual tour. As you go through the tour, you'll encounter a total of seven videos featuring either Emily or myself, where we talk about the exhibition's themes. We filmed these videos back in August. And you'll see a number of object highlights with accompanying text. Most of the objects were picked because they were particularly important to understanding the main arguments of the exhibition. But a few were picked just because they were personal favorite objects. We wrote completely new text for the virtual tour than what appears in the physical gallery space. We wanted it to be a true tour where you'd hear from us a bit more informally than you would if you were reading the more formal labels in the gallery on your own. The youth tour was similarly planned with selected object highlights and original label text. Mike appears in five videos for this tour. The content was written to be more accessible for younger audiences, but it covers the same themes as the adult tour. Even if you're an adult, I highly recommend checking out the youth tour because the education team chose different objects to highlight and you'll get a different perspective on the exhibition. And here is a sneak peek of the exhibition catalog. So this is not available quite yet, but should be available in the next couple of weeks. It will be available for free download on the APS website as a PDF and physical copies will be available for purchase at the museum when the exhibition finally opens.
the catalog has an original essay that I authored that expands on the themes of the exhibition and moves beyond the objects on display. In particular, I had an opportunity to expand on issues of race and gender, which are important themes in the exhibition, but that were limited by space and the availability of representative objects. Also, every object in the exhibition is illustrated in the exhibition catalog, along with a label text from the exhibition. The virtual touring catalog allowed me the opportunity to expand Dr. Franklin's citizen scientist narrative and will allow a larger audience to access the content. Now, even if you aren't able to visit Philadelphia next year, you'll still be able to learn from the exhibition. Benjamin Franklin was very much a believer in the importance of promoting useful knowledge and greater access to education. And I'm glad that the virtual touring catalog will help us do just that with this exhibition about Franklin's scientific legacy. Thank you.